This video will cover the conversion of a 1980s Honcho four-wheeler into a fully electric workhorse. Hey, Brett with Solarola. We have here a Honcho. One of the first uh, four-wheelers, especially one of the first four-wheel drive four-wheelers. And the reason I chose this uh, vehicle is it's pretty much, well it is, it's all chain drive. Nice big number 60 chains. And uh, this makes it really easy to add an electric motor to. So basically just a permanent magnet DC um, brush motor with a sprocket on it. And, and you're cruising. So with just the single motor and the single shaft, because of the way that this thing is designed, I'm able to drive both tires. So today I just got the battery fastened down. As I said, that's about a nine kilowatt battery. So um, we also have a, a 72 volt, 500 amp Alltrax controller on there. I just absolutely love these Alltrax controllers. I've used them in everything. I have one right here in our golf cart that we've been beating on for years. My friend Scott Berman has been beating on for years. And the thing just keeps coming back from where we can't kill it. I love the all tracks. And I was just thinking the other day how this little honcho here has a lot of Oregon heart and soul in it since the Bromo battery came from Oregon and also all tracks um, is a company in Grants Pass, I believe. So in front of that Alltrax controller, you see a big contactor there. That's my reversing contactor. So what's really nice is I don't have to have a mechanical reverse. I have an electrical reverse. I can reverse the motor with a flick of a switch, which will be really nice when I'm using this vehicle for work. So instead of having to reach down or, or grab some kind of shift lever, it's just a real simple little switch that'll be on the handlebar that'll switch me into reverse. So I'll be able to you know, back and forth with the plow and the snow blowers and the farm equipment, just real convenient. And that's how I'm building this thing, to have all my controls right up there on my fingertips so I can um, just really work the vehicle. So we'll have a thumb throttle for the, uh, you know, the power. We'll have our reversing contactor on, off, on, um, single pole dual throw switch on top. We'll have a single brake. You can check out the brake there. It's a pretty nice situation. It's right on the jack shaft or the intermediate shaft between the motor and the rear drive shaft there, the rear axle shaft. And that's a disc brake with a real powerful, uh, um, it's like a power screw um, type of lever for the brake. So that'll slow it down and it then slows down every wheel since every wheel is connected to the motor. So that's nice for even stopping. And yeah, so we're figuring, you know, call it a nine kilowatt battery. If you were theoretically using um, absolute full power, 500 amps at 40 volts, that's 20 kilowatt hours. So you could, you could go absolute full power for a half an hour on this thing. Okay, here we are for take two with the Frankenwheeler. So I had a little different sprocket set up on there. Well, just a different sprocket, really. So that gives me a final drive speed of about 16 miles an hour at the maximum RPM of the motor. Maximum RPM of the motor is about 2,000, 2,200. So usually my calculations put me real close within a mile an hour or two to what I actually see. Um, before I mentioned that we're really considering building some of these after going through it, it's like, it's so simple. And I would, I would you know, work to even eliminate some of these components to make it even simpler.
Hey there. Well, if we finally got our electric quad out to see what it can really do. So it's all fine and dandy to convert something to electric, but if it doesn't do anything but just sound cool, um, it's kind of useless. So everything that we're building, we are really thinking about the end result. We're designing, um, we're you know testing first the vehicles with gas engines and seeing how they can be made better, what we're missing, and uh, this thing's pretty awesome. So we geared it low so we can push hard. Um, it's not a speed demon, doesn't go really fast, but it's a four wheel drive. Um, it's a good pusher. So here we are being able to test it. Got a couple flurries coming down, maybe four inches of snow. Um, we could definitely push a little bit more, but it's nice to get out with this thing and you know get it get a little edge on it before it really builds up too much and yeah i dropped a volt and charge and i did basically our whole loop you know and uh around our house and here i'm just kind of finishing up um our little parking lot and then i'm done so yeah plenty of charge we could do this about five times without stopping and so we're good